Now you may also want to save this file as a work in progress or an LND file. The reason for that is if you decide to make changes like take out some lighting fixtures or move them around or just make any kind of arrangements on it, it's going to be 10 times easier on a work in progress LND than it would be if it's a JPEG file. So it's a good idea to always have both. So all you have to do is go back up to file, go to save as, make sure that your files of type is set to LND and click save. I've already saved it so I'm just going to save it again. So that's all you have to do. Now you're ready to open the image up in the lighting effects program. So you can either close this program or minimize it. Doesn't really matter. We're going to minimize it. And then you'll find a new icon on your desktop that says landscape lighting effects. This is the effects program. So now we want to double click this icon to launch the program. Now that you have the effects program open, your first step is to open up that image that you saved as a JPEG file. So we'll go up here to the open image icon. Then you need to navigate to the folder where you saved that file. Again, it's a great idea to know where you saved your files. Otherwise, you're going to be searching around for it. So this is our image here, Night Light with Lights, JPEG. I'll click open and you can see we have all the lighting fixtures and everything that we put in the image. Now before we get started creating lighting effects let's go over the icons in the program. There's only 12 icons so there's only a couple things to remember and they're pretty simple. So first of all you got this icon here which is the open image icon which I just used. We got the save icon here and then you have the zoom in and zoom out. Now because it is related to the uh, landscape lighting program the F9 and the F10 also work in this program. So I'm going to press F9 and you can see I'm zooming out, press F10, I'm zooming back in. Or you could click on the zoom in icon, bring it over to what you want to zoom in on, and simply click on it as I'm zooming in on this rock. You could zoom back out by hitting the minus on the magnifying glass here. So zoom in, but you have to click where you want to zoom, and zoom out brings you back out. The next one here is the lighting tools. I'm clicking on it now, but nothing's happening. That's because I don't have any lighting effects showing here. So I'm going to skip this one, which turns off the lighting effects, and show you what these moons do. The first one is just a light uh, darkness. Does that make sense, does it? It's a little bit of darkness. This is a little bit more darker. And this is the darkest setting. So you have the option of how dark you want it to be. I personally like to use the middle one here because it's the middle ground so that I can see my lighting effects and then when I'm all done I put it on the darkest setting. If you click on this one now with the uh, sunshine that brings you back to day. So you go from day to night by clicking on that. And you'll notice that once you have the lighting effects this icon now is highlighted so that you can go in and use your lighting effects tools which we'll cover here in a second. The last two icons here are the products. If you want to label the products in the image, you would use this icon here, which will bring up your lighting fixtures. And this menu can be moved around anywhere on the screen and set up however you want it. And when you click on one of these lighting fixtures, it brings up a spec sheet. If you wanted to add the specs to this particular um, image, you would click Add and then simply click where you want that label to be. Again, we'll cover that more later. So the next one here is the transformer settings. So if you want to call out a transformer, all you got to do is find the transformer that you want. And again, it works just like the lighting fixtures. Click add and you can add the transformer specs. So let's get going. So before we get going here, I need to explain to you how the lighting tools work. It's like if you were going to build a deck, you need to know how to use a level to get that deck level. It's a similar scenario here. So first of all, this is the tool that makes all the lighting effects. When we click on it, this is what we're going to get. The first thing you'll know here is there's a menu when you click on the arrow, slide it up to the top, you get small brushes slide it down to the bottom you get larger brushes and they alternate between square and round. When you're in draw mode when you click in the image you can draw with light. Now in reality what you're doing is you're just 
cutting through the black film that's put over the picture. So if it's dark behind the black film, it's still going to be dark when you try to draw a light in. That's why I lightened up the image a bit in the beginning. So when the draw is selected here, you're drawing with light. When you click on erase, you're actually erasing the light and bringing the darkness back in. Um, again, we'd need a bigger brush to bring this back because the lighting effects actually fans out from the center and it fades into the, uh, the border. So we'll show you that here in a second. So I'm going to undo that and we'll just go back to this point. So you almost always want to have it on draw. Now down here you got these sliders. This is intensity. It's set at 100% right now. So if I want to put a light here or actually make make it look like this light is turned on, I simply click on it. And you can see now that's brightened up because really I've cut a hole in the black film going across it. But it's actually a little bit bigger than I want because I used a large brush. So let's undo that. Let's get a smaller brush and let's do it again. And with a couple clicks, now it looks like that light is turned on. So when the intensity is set to 100, that means it's cutting through the black film at 100%, which will give you the brightest effect like we did with this light. So I'm going to draw a line here, and that's 100. I'm going to scale this down to about 50%, close enough, and we'll draw line number two. And then I'm going to take it down to about 4% and draw line number three. Now you see, you can hardly see line number three because it's just cutting through, let's say, at 4%. This one was cutting at 57%. It's a little bit lighter than this one here, which is the brightest at 100%. So keep that in mind. If you just want to make something a little bit lighter, you can turn down the intensity and that will make the light effect less. I would like to also point out the undo feature here. You notice I made three lines. If I click undo, it undoes the last one. Undo again will undo number two. And undo one more time will undo the first one. If I click undo again, it took off the effect of this lighting fixture because that was the first thing I did. But you'll notice now that the undo is grayed out because there's nothing left to undo. Another thing you should know about undo, so let's say I do three things here and I click OK and then I come back into the lighting effect and I do three things again and I click undo. I can only undo the effects when I came in to the command because these were done before I can't undo them once I leave this command the undo goes away so the only way to get rid of those now would be to click OK and then click undo up here and that gets rid of them but you don't want to necessarily do that because then you have no control of what you're undoing so the bottom line is undo the mistakes as you make them that's really the best way to do it now let's go over the light width basically what this does it gives you a fade out from the center point of what you're drawing to the edge and the amount of pixels that it will go from the edge. Let's just do it and I think you'll understand. So I'm going to turn it all the way down to let's say one. And I have a very small brush as you can see here. So I'm going to draw a line and you can see it's just a line. It has no real uh, effect on it. So I'm going to up this to about say six and draw a line again. Again with the same brush size it now is probably five times thicker. But you can see it's like a hundred percent in the center and then it fades out towards the edges about eight pixels and because it's set at eight. Let's go up to something like 17 and it gets even wider and as you can see I'm going to zoom in here. It's brightest in the center and then it fades out as it gets to the edge just like a light fades out. So we're going to up it all the way to 30 and you can see the different effects. Now they're all drawn with the smallest brush. It's just that this one has 29 pixels, this one had 8, this one had 6, whatever it was, and this one had 1. So it gives you a width of your effect. Now let's undo all that. And let's say I want to make this light light up again. I've got the intensity set at 100 and I've got my light width at 29. If I click on that, 
it gives me more than I wanted. I don't really want this halo effect around it. So I'm going to undo that and I'll lower my light width setting. And now I have more control of what I'm lighting up because I have a small brush, intensity is 100, and the width is about 12. Let's do it on these two. You can see it looks like these lights are just being turned on. So while we're doing it, let's go around and do these. So I'm going to take all the path lights and make them look like they're on. I'm going to go into the up lights and just touch on the end of it here. And now basically I'm done. So let's zoom out so you can see it. And it looks like those lights are on. I haven't done the effect on the light here, which I'll do here in a second. 